Good morning. Welcome to our presentation today on sustainable value and the use of sustainability cues on packaging. I'm going to talk a little bit about what value is, then what sustainable value is, and go on to think about how sustainability is being communicated to consumers. I'm also going to talk about emerging technology and how this can be used by manufacturers and retailers to capture sustainable value. So let me start by reflecting on what value is. It is very hard to get into words what value actually is. When we think of value and what value is, we have to consider consumers and how they derive their perception of value. Essentially, what I get for what I give. What I give can be money, but other factors as well. We can see from this survey by DEFRA, a government department in the UK, that price is ranked by 90% of people as one of the top five factors that influences their consumer choice when purchasing food. Price is closely followed by utility, quality, performance, taste, and whether it was a healthy option. When we ask consumers in this abstract fashion, they will often rank ethical or eco-friendly far below other product attributes. Let's consider value for a moment. For some people, value is about low price. For others, it's about quantity. How much do I get for my money? For example, portion size. Other people might consider value in terms of what I want from a product. Is it easy to prepare? Is it convenient? However, the element I'm going to focus on today is whether value and quality is about what I get for the price I pay. And we can think of that in two ways, as you saw in the previous slide. One way is intrinsic value, thoughts of taste or flavour, and the other is extrinsic value, considering how that food has been produced, where it's been produced, and the ethical factors we associate with the product itself. We can think of models of value creation and what value means to consumers in a different way. If we look at this Venn diagram, we can think of individual businesses or indeed individual products and think of value purely based on price, margin or profit for a business. And this is economic sustainability, essential for any business to survive. There are other products that can demonstrate environmental sustainability. We can think of those where thought has been given to the recyclability of packaging, for example, or the types of ingredients that are being used and their impact on the environment. Do they cause cutting down of rainforests, soil erosion, or what's their water footprint? Consideration of these can drive environmental sustainability and where economic sustainability and environmental sustainability intersect, as you can see on this diagram, we can argue that this creates environmental value for that product. There is also a third element of the triple bottom line, that is social sustainability. And we can think of products that combine both economic return and social value for the supply chain and consumers. Examples might be fair trade, or UTZ standards for products. It is when we combine all three, economic, environmental and social sustainability, that we can truly get sustainable value creation. So what is sustainable value? Simply, it is the value derived by an organisation or food supply chain through being sustainable. And as we said, there are three elements to that value being economically sustainable, environmentally sustainable, and socially sustainable. For a farmer, obviously, being sustainable is having enough income to remain in business, and is also to minimise the impact on the environment of the operation of growing the wheat, so that food can still be grown by generation after generation to come. The environment you see before you has a value for the people that live around the farmer, 
So the farmer needs to deliver social sustainability too. We could argue that social sustainability is also about food that is affordable and delivers food security for all. Many organisations seek to capture and create sustainable value and we see the rise of a number of initiatives around shared values and sustainable value creation. But why is sustainable value so important? Quite simply, it is because sustainable value underpins the value of your brand. The brand sits on every organisation's balance sheet and also underpins customer loyalty. So how is the sustainable value captured? Well, it's linked to what your customers believe and perceive as being of value. And how is it lost? All too quickly. And that is a real challenge of being in business today in a global 24-7 world. One wrong decision and your brand value could simply disappear. The problem with sustainability is that it's complicated confusing and when the industry tries to explain sustainability to consumers it often tries to make it more simple. One way of trying to simplify this complication is to simply make it binary. We try and create a simple decision for consumers. Here it might be free range cows good, permanently housed cows bad, even plant based drinks better. But is it really that simple? The industry are also increasingly producing sustainability metrics and indexes and it could be argued seeking to reduce sustainability to a number or a code. But again, is it that simple? Alternatively, as an industry, we are also creating visual cues on packaging. The challenge with sustainability cues on packaging is that it's a truly crowded marketplace. There are multiple sustainability cues you can see standing at any retail shelf. So how do you as a consumer know which particular cue to go for? What is it that visually or mentally appeals to you or to the people that you purchase food for? Well, it's complex because there are standards which are represented on this slide that are business to business or B2B standards such as Global Gap. They create sustainable value by providing certification which allows access to the market for farmers and growers, and yet the consumer probably doesn't even know they exist. However, for business-to-business -business transactions in the food supply chain, they are essential. There are other standards on this slide that are driven by governments, such as the One of Your Five a Day logo, to nudge consumers towards a healthy diet. In Europe, we also have legal regulations that relate to and underpin some of these cues. For example, organic standards, or where the producer may claim protected geographic indication for a product such as Stilton cheese. Now, I spend my life looking at sustainability cues. Perhaps I should get out more. But it's also complicated for me because even the business to consumer standards that are present on packaging, it's difficult to tell the difference. What is the difference in terms of people welfare between UTZ and fair trade? Is Caring Dairy the same as RSPCA Assured? Or if I move over to the organic standards on this slide, do the Soil Association standard and the Organic Farmers and Growers standard represent the same thing? Consumers are bombarded with a whole set of messages about the credence of a product. And yet, how can they as consumers check that product for themselves? Should they simply trust the information or be concerned with some of the products that the claims are just too good to be true and it might quite simply be greenwash? If a consumer is prepared to make an effort, there are many things that they can do. They can check websites and if it is freely and publicly available, find out what the standard is behind the queue. But how transparent really is the standard to the consumer or the process of certification on which sustainable value creation depends? How can consumers find out the truth about how that individual product has been produced or what the queue is actually telling them? 
We can think of a whole range of attributes the cues are trying to communicate. Well, what else can be used on packaging to communicate sustainable value? Can sustainability cues actually get smart? And this is where it starts to get really interesting. Technology is developing fast, and I'm going to give three examples here of the myriad of technologies being developed. We can think of the advent of edible inks. Anyone who has bought a ready-made cake for their child's birthday party will have purchased a product with edible ink. And the development of edible ink technology means that we will be able to print barcodes on individual pieces of fruit that can provide information for the consumer if they are scanned. Whether this takes off depends on if the consumer feels that it's actually a value for them to have this information with every piece of fruit. We already have thermochromatic inks on food packaging, inks that would change colour depending on the temperature. I know the example that I'm showing you is about whether the can is at the right temperature to actually drink the beer, important for many people that buy the product, it will deliver value and real value to them. But some may see this value in a totally different way because the technology could be developed to be used to demonstrate if the cool chain has been compromised for a given food and consumers can check for themselves if they may be at risk of food poisoning. The industry could also look more effectively at RIFID technology. This technology provides immense opportunities with the packaging being able to communicate with a whole range of equipment. Imagine if your food could communicate with a smart fridge and that fridge could collect a whole range of information. Imagine if you could use the RIFID code yourself as a consumer to find out about how that product has moved around the world. These new technologies mean the supply chain can drive improved transparency and also reduce food waste and that delivers sustainable value for everyone. Very exciting is the advent of QR codes that are being used on a whole range of products to deliver sustainable value. From a social and economic sustainability viewpoint QR codes can be used to reduce the risk of food fraud and the use of QR codes in developing transparent supply chains is gaining pace and there are multiple examples of where the technology can and is being used. Blockchain is being used to drive sustainable value and I have just one example here from the UK but there are many examples from around the world. Happily Transparent is an emerging UK tool that can be used by any business large or small to communicate directly with the consumer. The technology creates the opportunity at the point of purchase, at the shelf or on the menu for consumers to go beyond static visual sustainability cues and to access detailed information that supports the sustainable value of the product. How many people would want to do this when they go shopping or eating a meal in a restaurant? I just go back to the slide I put up at the beginning of the presentation to show that price will always be the most important factor for consumers. But there are other credence attributes as well that they are interested in. 20 years ago, Red Tractor as a packaging queue in the UK was new and innovative. Today, it's quite simply a requirement in the supply chain for market access, a baseline. 20 years from now, many of the technologies that are in their infancy some of them I've talked about today, and QR codes, will again simply be a given, expected by the consumer for them to check the standards and the integrity of the product from that queue. Whether it is static sustainability queues or smart packaging, the real challenge in demonstrating sustainable value is what I'm calling today the three Vs. I spent the last 20 minutes or so talking about sustainable value and how it is perceived. Value will always be the most important attribute of a product. 
Consumers determine value in multiple ways, as we've discussed, but it is underpinned by the other two P Vs. The first one is veracity or truth. Increasingly, consumers are demanding truth and honesty as an essential element of value. The challenge for the food industry is how they verify their supply chains to demonstrate that the queue is truly honest. And this third V of verification extends to consumers too. Consumers want to be able to verify that the food presented on shelf, on the website or on the menu is what it purports to be. And proving this will be a continued challenge for the food supply chain. Multiple fraud incidents have shown that certification alone is not enough. And this is driving the food industry right now to look at alternative tools to verify data and information in the supply chain. Without clearly demonstrating integrity and trust in food supply chains, organisations cannot deliver value to consumers and cannot then translate this value into sustained brand value and net worth on their balance sheets. I close by saying that the presentation I give today is just part of much wider research work that I'm doing with multiple colleagues in this area of food integrity. Considering the whole concept of sustainable value goes much further and deeper than I've spoken about in the time I have today. Thank you for listening and my contact details at the end of this presentation. So please do get in touch if you have any questions or further thoughts on the topic. Thank you for listening.